Good evening, everyone. Thank you for waiting. Welcome again to another live session series of Sash Factor International. My name is Carl Kaplan, and I'm your host for tonight. Tonight, we have a very special guest from the Kingdom of Thailand. And in honor of our guest, let me speak in my rusty type. So, to so, the club, Pom Shu Kal Club, Pony, Pom Jing Jing, DJ, Le Tung Ten Makma, Tidai, Sampat, Miss Universe Thailand candidate, Le Curve Model, Le uh, Real Size Beauty Advocate. Tonight, I'm very happy and excited because we have, we're going to interview a very beautiful, um, very beautiful candidate inside and out. She's from the Kingdom of Thailand. She is, um, a curve, curve model and currently a real size, a real size beauty advocate. So without further ado, let me present to you the very beautiful Anne Scott Kemis. Hey Anne, how are you? How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm, I'm great. Thank you. I'm very happy and I'm very excited. I can't help it and I can't hide it. Um, <laughs> I guess you, so you, you, you understand what I'm trying to say. Um, but anyways, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, let me normalize, let me focus. Um, before we start, I would like to thank you for giving us the chance to speak with you. We feel very honored here at Sash Factor to be graced by your presence. So uh, the first question is, or the first he asked from you is, for the benefit of the Filipino fans and the fans across the world, kindly introduce yourself to us. Sure. First of all, I want to say thank you. It's my honor to be here. And I am Anchley Scott Chemist. My nickname is Anne. I'm 22 years old and I'm currently running for Miss Universe Thailand 2021. And right now, I think you are Miss Universe Thailand 2021. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just the aura, the sheer presence of yourself. You are already a winner. <laughs> My earphones. <laughs> it's okay, dear. It's okay. Even even your headphone, even your headphone is excited for you. I can tell. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, they say right now. <laughs> Currently, they say Mercury is in retrograde, so I think these things are really happening right now. That's the reason why. <laughs> if the biggest problem is my headphones falling out, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Anyways, um, Anne, please give us three adjectives to best describe yourself. Or if we ask your friends, how is Anne as a person? What are the three adjectives that people would tell or are used to, to describe you? I think authentic because I I am a big believer in staying true to who you are and what you stand for. Acceptance because it's, you know, our contemporary society now, it's time to really accept everything um, within the realms of respect. And it's something I truly believe in and diverse because I believe in it so much. I just... I'm advocating for that too, you know, so it's, it's really part of who I am. All right. You've given me three powerful adjectives and um, among the three, which do you think is your most favorite? Authentic. What is the importance of being authentic? If I may ask you. When we look at humans in general, if we stray from who we are and what our core is, we will end up finding ourselves coming full circle back to where our core is. So that's all about authenticity and staying true to who you are and being the most real version of yourself you can be. I think it is, it's just so important for I agree. every sake. Yeah. I definitely agree because, I mean, at the end of the day, no matter what facade you put in front of you, um, your, your, your true character would still shine through. So yeah. I really believe in, I really believe in, in you saying that it's really very important to be authentic. Uh, now let's, let's discuss first, uh, some, some, um, things about your childhood, some th life facts about you first, if you don't mind me asking. First off is, 
Uh, we understand that you are of uh, mixed ancestry. Your your mom is Thai and your dad is Australian. So tell us more about your childhood um, growing up in both Thailand and Australia. Well, I actually grew up in Thailand. I didn't move to Australia until I was 17 years old. But every summer, so Australian winter, we would go visit Australia and connect more so with our Australian side or my Australian side. Um, my childhood was very fun. I, I'm so grateful to have come from such a loving family, but also a challenging one in the sense where they, they really, my parents pushed me a lot to grow. And we really, we're a very liberal family in the sense of what we can talk about. So that's definitely helped me build character. And my dad is one of a kind. My dad is one of a kind. He is elegant, like very poised. So you've got that side of him, the business side, and then you've got this sports fanatic side where he's just go why did you kick the ball like that don't do that like at the tv screen so it's i i feel very lucky to have experienced the fun and the growth what is the advantage of living in both sides of the world in thailand and in australia you get to pull different factors of different cultures into who you are you get to embrace both you get to pull the great things about the Australian culture. So that's, you know, progressive thinking and very liberal kind of thinking. And the Thai culture, with which is a massive, massive, deep-rooted sense of respect towards everyone and that collective community aspect, I, I think that's the true beauty in being able to have experienced both cultures. Terrific. Thank you for sharing that. My next question to you is, um, what is your oldest memory or oldest recollection of beauty pageants? Beauty pageants. I, what, from what I can remember at the top of my head right now, I must have been 14 or 15, but we were flying to Europe on a family holiday and our flight got delayed. And they put us in a hotel where they were actually doing Miss Grand Thailand. So oh. I remember seeing these beautiful Thai women just so confident in who they are and they were in the lobby and I was in the lobby just just like going through puberty awkwardly like what is going <laughs> on but that's what I can remember and obviously growing up in Thailand where pageantry is very big you do get exposed to it from quite a young age but I never had first-hand experience seeing it the way I saw Miss Grant happening um years ago yeah all right well i'm happy that um you were exposed to 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 a local pageant i mean local and international pageant and that inspired you to to be a beauty a beauty queen as well because if not you wouldn't be with us tonight oh i mean you know having a i think a lot of thai people can relate if you're mixed race especially a woman that your mums tend to nudge you to that side a little bit so i had my mom do that a lot don't you don't you don't need to worry because here in the philippines it's the same <laughs> Is it? it's the same yes it, it, it's the same it's every mom's dream to have a beauty queen in, in their family well almost <laughs> <laughs> I love that. all right thank you for sharing that my next question to you is tell us more about um tell us more more about your your hobbies as a kid my hobbies that I, as a kid. I did Taekwondo and ballet, which were two contradictions, if you really do think <laughs> about it. <laughs> I did that a lot as a child and I grew up playing a lot of sports. Naturally, if I'm not sure if you're familiar with Australian culture in general, but having that exposure to Australian culture and a dad who's a sports fanatic, you just, you get exposed to a lot of sports. So that was definitely what I did on the weekends after school. Um, but my parents were very liberal and free in the sense of what I wanted to do. So naturally, I I just 
loved sports, really. I really I enjoy it. All right. I hear you saying sports. Well, actually, I researched on your videos before prior to this interview because I want to come in prepared. I, I also uh, heard and I also learned that uh, you were captain of the, the basketball team and the volleyball team for quite a few years in, in during high school. So being a leader and being a, being a sports person, what do you think are the, uh, are the advantages of, of being such as you forge ahead uh, in this Miss Universe Thailand journey? The ability to fight, I think, to really push through the hard times. I remember a lot of times in sports, particularly volleyball, because that was my main one, you, you know, you're about to lose a game, but you just, you have that fight in you. Again, just, excuse me. <laughs> it's okay. Um, the ability to fight and not give up, you really show that that, that edge to will, you're willing to take that extra step can really allow you to come up on top. And I'm, I really will take that onto this Miss Universe Thailand journey with me because it is, it's not easy trying to find a representative of your nation. So I, it's a dream and it's something I'm really willing to fight for. And in terms of leadership, I've really learned to own up to mistakes. When you make a bad call, when you've accidentally said the wrong thing to your teammates, perhaps in the heat of the moment, owning up to it and knowing that you're human and you will make a mistake, but it's the act of accountability that I think really shows true leadership. And it's something I will take with me on the journey too. If I make a mistake, I will own up to it and be better. Well, thank you for saying accountability. That resonates. Uh, in my heart, because here in the Philippines, I don't want to describe it further, but we need accountability now more than ever. So thank you for saying that. All right, let's move on. Um, what is your guilty pleasure, if you don't mind me asking? Cheesecake. Cheesecake. You know, cheese. Lemon cheesecake. Ooh. Lemon cheesecake. Um, thank you for being specific. So why lemon cheesecake? What? What feeling does it evoke from you when you when you have a slice or at least a bite of lemon cheesecake? Okay, so you know how you get the softness in a ch the cheesecake part, and then like the cookie bit at the bottom, the oh, pie yeah. almost the crust. It's the, just the mixture of those, two. and my mouth is watering thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just and then that, that lemon, that just, that inch of, you know, <laughs> definitely um, lemon cheesecake. We can relate. We can relate. In fact, I have a blueberry cheesecake in the, in the fridge right now. So I told, I'm totally with, with you when you say it's, it's cheesecake. Hands down, I agree. So good. <laughs> <laughs> now, my question to you is, what are your pet peeves? I have one, and that is leaving the bathroom door open. When you're not using it, of course, um, leaving it open. It's just something about it. Just I, I can't explain it. But if I see the bathroom door open, whether it's just a little bit, I will walk up and shut it. My, my best friend will know I have yelled at her so many times for leaving the bathroom door open, but she, she, she's traumatized by that experience. Okay, thank you. So guys and girls alike, if you don't want to offend, or if you don't want to, if you don't want to push the trigger buttons of Anne, I tell you, you better shut the door of the, of the bathroom or run for your life. <laughs> I'm not mean, I'm not mean. <laughs> I was just kidding. I was just kidding. We are talking about um, earlier. I, I asked you two questions: guilty pleasures and hobbies. And we're talking about more of the psyche of, of a person. And I, I also researched that you took up sociology in in college. Um, what are your key takeaways from that course, and how do you think that would help you um, moving forward or move ahead, um, or how do you how you're going to present yourself 
um, in the ongoing Miss Universe Thailand competition? Well, everything is connected. Our society is fundamentally deep rooted and we have connections with every single person on this world. And it's been accelerated, not only because of COVID, because COVID worked as a catalyst to accelerate more social media presence. To understand that everything is connected is truly a foundation to how humans interact with each other and how our societies function. So taking that on to Miss Universe and especially with my advocacy is you have to understand that your actions really do affect someone else's psyche even and how they carry themselves in society and how they influence other people within their communities. So if we're talking about real size beauty and advocating for a different beauty standard, well, right now I'm talking globally, it's that you have to understand the influence of lack of representation you have, especially in pageantry world, and how that can affect someone's community, someone's perception, and even someone's life, how they, what they eat, how they exercise, it, it all really intertwines with one another. All right, terrific. Thank you. Now that you've mentioned that, um, I mentioned earlier also that um, you are a curved model. So for the benefit of those who have yet to fully grasp what the niche is or what the niche is, could you explain to us what a curve model is and, 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 and where do you fit in in the, in, in the, in the industry? Yeah, sure. So in the modeling fashion industry, you've got models who tend to fall into these things called sample size, which are US size zero to four. So those are the typical models you would see on runways previously, because now we've definitely opened up our lenses. And if you go above, if you go from a six onwards, usually to about 12 US, you fall under this in-between category, which has been labeled as curve. But the meaning can really change depending on what people prefer to be called. So a lot of women, especially in the fashion industry, who were previously labeled as plus size, don't like being labeled as that because it's quite a demeaning word to call someone. They prefer being called curve models. So curve models really do range from a size US 6 upwards. All right, thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. So it's really more of um, really calling, um, no, no, no. So it's the evolve, uh, involvement or plus size when you, it, it's the evolution rather of of the term plus size to make it more appropriate and to, to make it sound not demeaning at all. So that, yeah. that's what you meant, right? Okay. Yeah, and all to right. add more categories into, add more women into that group. Um, Previously, you get, you've been called, as I've mentioned, the in-between size. That's also kind of a weird size to be calling someone. So referring to them as curve is, is again, another way to add towards that. Okay, terrific. Um, every time I see your social media handles, I see the hashtag um, real size beauty. So, um, I know you already mentioned a snippet about it earlier when you discussed um, your, when you answered the question, but could you tell us more about it in detail? Yeah, so real size beauty truly is about a shift in mindset and perceptions of our individuality. It's about accepting yourself for how you come, your individuality. You celebrate that. Our world is so diverse and full of different aspects that make each and every one so unique and what I would think worth exploring. So it's about breaking those beauty standards and making it your own and making it your own by celebrating your individuality, your diversity and your uniqueness and understand that you're real, real size, whether you're bigger built, smaller built, curvier, less curvier, whatever it may be is real and therefore 
it is beautiful because it's unique to your individuality, diversity, and uniqueness. So what I hear from it's like, you are real, you are you, you are perfect as you are. So that's real size beauty. Did yeah, I get it right? Making your own, making your own beauty standard. Perfect. All right. So you don't confirm the beauty standard, you define it. So that's real size beauty. Terrific. Thank you. Now, let me ask you this question. How did your parents react? Because you mentioned that you, your dad is more of the business side and the mom is the one who's nudging you to, or, or, or planting the seeds of, of um, giving an idea of joining beauty pageants in the future. How did they react when you joined or when you told them that you are going to join Miss Universe Thailand? They were extremely supportive. My mom, my mom's reaction was a given, considering <laughs> as we've talked about in the Philippines and Thailand, I was really shocked with my dad's um, reaction because as you've mentioned, he's a lot more on the business side. He doesn't take much focus onto pageantry or even fashion, but he was very open-minded about it and was really go for it, chase that dream. It's going to be an experience that you will never forget. And I think that was, that was more his take on it, not so much, you know, the pageantry Miss Universe Thailand side. So I, I was shocked with how support, supportive he was. So they're, they're really, really excited actually. I'm very happy that they are excited for you. And I agree with your dad. Um, it's really more of the experience because when you grow, as you grow older or somewhere down the line, when you have your kids or your grandkids, you can say, hey, this is, this is grandma, this is your mom. And I, I was part of Miss Universe Thailand many yeah, moons ago. I think he's, to that he's, more, he's more like thinking about learning how to talk to people more, how to interact mm. with people more breaking out of your comfort zone because it is out of my comfort zone and just embracing changes. That's, that's definitely his take on it for sure. My mom, I think my mom's more with you. That's, that's my grandma. She <laughs> used to do this like that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying. And my question to you is, um, this is a gargantuan task, so to speak. So who are the people behind you in this journey uh, of uh, being a Miss Universe Thailand candidate? I cannot thank my feline team enough. They, they are making a girl's dream come true. They are the ones behind this. Their hard work and just true dedication and patience is making this very successful. They, um, they include um, Milin, I call her Mami, which is mum, mummy, that's her nickname. <laughs> um, Pilek and Pimo. And then there's a, another support team that helps supervise other aspects too. But those three are the success behind, yeah. I just all right. Can't think so, all right. So, for those who's helping and um, in this journey, would like to say thank you, Kopkun, Kopkun Nakrab. So, my my next question to you is: We are currently in a pandemic. So, how has the pandemic um, affected your mental health and your preparations overall? At the beginning of the pandemic, I struggled a lot. I was living in Australia at that time in Sydney and we had just gone into full lockdown and I lived alone. And the restrictions were really, really tough for a 20 year old to be going through alone and having your family live in, you know, your mum and dad specifically live in Thailand. That took a really massive toll on my mental health. I had to see a therapist so yeah it, it was it was tough it's 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 hard to think about now because it felt like ages ago but it was really only last year but in terms of preparation 
it, it has affected my preparation a little bit because we had just come out of a lockdown and we're still in a little bit of a restriction stage right now. So it's hard to practice the things I wanted to improve in, more specifically my stage performance, walking. That was hard because you you can't go to a venue to practice that. But, you know, as everything, you just you have to find a way to overcome it. That's just the silver lining, the reality. You, humans are so good at adapting. That's what I've really realized. You find ways to make it work. I agree. I agree. At, at the very least, I mean, when, when, when faced with circumstances, we really ought to, to adapt um, so we could, we could um, be able to survive for, for the lack of, of a better term. But I, I hear you saying earlier that you've, you've uh, sought help with a therapist. How are you right now? I hope you're okay. I'm okay now. I am. You know, it, it is tough to go through mental health. I do not, I can't articulate it enough. But when you cross over that bridge and you've made it through, you realize how much stronger you've become without that experience you truly wouldn't be who you are today or well, who I am today that you learn techniques of you know how to overcome anxiety that everyone does experience you know on different levels but you really learn how to overcome it but most importantly you learn to look for positives you learn to look for silver linings and that changes your outlook on life so looking back at it now it's I'm actually grateful I went through it. Thank you. Thank you for being vulnerable. It's not easy to tell in front of people, in front of our listeners, that you've gone through something and, and you're able to, to uh, rise above it, um, so to speak. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that piece of information with us. Your name is gaining traction here in the Philippines most definitely in Thailand and across the world. So how do you feel about it? I'm really speechless with the support. I, I couldn't have imagined someone who was no one to a lot of people. No one knew me. And all of a sudden people are interested in what I have to say. And that's the most important thing, interested in what I have to say and the message that I'm trying to really push out. It's, as I mentioned, an, an out-of-body experience. I, I forget that it's me. I look at my phone and it's sometimes like, wait, this isn't, this isn't it. This is not my Instagram. This is not my phone. This, like, I just... Everything's happened so fast that you just you don't have a minute to catch up on what's happening. So it becomes this out of body experience. But I am so grateful for the support. I am so grateful that people have are willing to listen. That's the first step. That open mindedness. That that is that is a win. No matter the circumstance. Do you feel pressured right now, given the fact that you are gaining momentum? And how do you deal with it? I do. I do. I think it's natural to feel a it? sense of pressure. You know, I just hold on to why I'm doing it. The true reason I'm doing it is really to break the barrier in beauty standards. Initially, it was just Thailand, and now it's the world and the pageantry world. So holding on to that reason, holding on to exactly why I'm doing it is, is how I just shake it off and soldier on. Okay, terrific. Um, if I'm not mistaken, there are 63. Uh, see, hello. Oh my God. Yes, I can hear, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. I, I thought I lost my connection for, 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 for a while, <laughs> for a quick moment. I, I thought, oh my God. 
Um, sorry, going back to my question, have you scouted a competition? And who do you think is um, is your greatest um, uh, competition as of yet? Um, you've definitely seen the, the other women competing and they are very strong and unique in their own way. It's, I think it's dangerous, first of all, to compare myself with someone else if I'm doing it myself. So I, I actually don't do any of that stuff. Toughest competition would have to be everyone. It, it's so different this year. You have um, a mind, not a mind reader. People, what, I'm sorry, what's the occupation you call people who predict the future? Um, mind readers, seers. Seers? Yeah. Well, you you got a woman who... Fortune tellers, yeah. Fortune tellers, there we go, yeah. So you got a fortune teller, you've got, you know, models, you've got nurses, you've got farmers, you've got everything. And you can't compare those different qualities because everyone is so... You really possess something that's unique to you. So I feel bad for the judges, to be honest. <laughs> it's going to be a tough year for them, I guess. It's going to be tough for all of us. <laughs> all right. But again, I wish you luck. And I think um, you have it in you. At the, at the on, on the finals night, it's just really destiny who would, would really play in. Yeah, all right. I agree. Um, Thank you. My, my next question to you is, let me ask you a little bit a more serious question. What was the when was the last time you failed, and what did you learn from it? Well, it would be around the period before COVID actually hit. I I struggled with mental health for a while, um, and I'm comfortable to talk about it now because I've come out of it. But COVID was not the only time where I struggled and I struggled a lot of times before then but I lost I felt unworthy and I must have been seven, 18 19 just before turning 20 I felt really unworthy and useless and it's a failure in the sense where you you stop looking after yourself you stopped putting yourself first when you needed to. And you don't realize the effect it has on your everyday life, the people you're hurting. My parents especially, because of course they'd be worried, you know, my little brother, my friends, my schooling got a little bit affected. My friends, I didn't see anybody. And it, you just fall into this mindset and you go into this rabbit hole of just negative thoughts and it's you know it, it's unfortunate that it happens when you go through anything that has to do with mental health issues but I really feel like I've failed myself more than anything and looking back at it now it's you really see the importance of believing in yourself feeling like you have a purpose in this society, this world even, you overcome it and you, you build character and you build strength, a lot of strength that you just didn't know you had. And it is, it's definitely the biggest failure of my life because I stopped loving myself. And I saw myself um, in the worst light possible. I apologize. Um, how did you rise above it? And um, if I'm going to show you your 18-year-old self, what will be your message to to the 18-year-old Anne? Just you'll get through it. You, you won't understand until you get through it. And being 22 now, still young, you know, it is something I will carry with me for the rest of my life. You just have to tackle it head on, just soldier on. Because like a lot of things in life, you don't know until you've experienced it. All right. Thank you.
on the flip side, when was the last time you succeeded and what was your takeaway from it? Right now, seeing people accepting themselves more, seeing people be brave and posting real size beauty, you know, joining the movement. I was someone that not a lot of people knew, you know, just my friends and family and just someone so small and didn't have the reach can make such an impact on society already is incredible. It is something that I couldn't have dreamed of. It is something bigger than me and it's something that helps everyone so right now i think this is the most successful i've ever been and i'm not talking pageantry i'm talking about social change all right thank you um my next question to you is why should you be the next miss universe thailand 2021 i'm ready i think i bring a fresh perspective and I will never stray from authenticity and my message and it's time to break barriers it's time to have young girls and younger generations have representations of someone they can relate to on a global stage because the effect it will have will be nothing but positive so i i think i should be the next miss universe thailand because i'm ready to challenge the norm i'm ready to be a voice for our younger generations and i'm ready to represent our younger generations i absolutely agree with you you should be the winner <laughs> oh, thank you <laughs> All right. I will be giving you a few uh, a word, some words that I need to, I wish to ask your thoughts on. Let's begin with the first word or first phrase, body positivity. What are your thoughts on it? Body positivity is about embracing your body and understanding that your body allows you to do a lot of things that are capable. You know, you can work out, you can go buy food, you can move around and do everything in your daily life. But I also think what's really important to point out about body positivity is you can be positive about your body, but what always has to come first is your health. I don't want the wrong message to be spread in the sense where if your health is being jeopardized, you can love yourself, but you're loving yourself by doing something to save your health. All right, thank you. Next is beauty standards. What are your thoughts on beauty standards? My thoughts on beauty standards is that it's changing all the time. So why are we conforming to them? These beauty standards are constructed and they don't actually represent the majority of the people in the world. Therefore, it's not reality. Therefore, it shouldn't be a standard. So I think beauty standards should be defined by you and it should be about who you are, what you're capable of, and it should be inner beauty much rather than outer beauty because that's not what keeps the world going. All right, thank you. Next would be bullying. What are your thoughts on bullying? Bullying is unfortunately something I think a lot of younger people tend to experience in school, but we need to understand that we have to respect one another. We're allowed to express our opinion, but don't express it if you have nothing productive to say and if it's criticism with no purpose constructive criticism is different bullying i think goes into really the human psychology of perhaps insecurities or whatever other foundations it may be so i i don't condone it and i think you need to learn to respect one another okay terrific thank you next would be lockdowns We've all gone through it and we all know how tough it is and some people have had it tougher than others. But, you know, I think we have really seen how resilient 
the human races in general with lockdowns, how we've able to rise above it and find what I've mentioned before, adaptability, to be able to interact with each other in other ways. And we've also seen the power of technology to make us feel connected when we're apart. So in such a tough time like this, we have to look for positives, we have to look for the light and the ability for humans to adapt and connect in other ways is a silver lining of lockdowns. Thank you. Moving on is face mask. Face, oh, masks. Yes, face masks. They save lives. They protect you and they protect the people around you. Wear a face mask. Simple as All that. All right. How about vaccine? Vaccine hesitancy? I, I want to break into two groups more so. One where it's you're hesitant because it's a new vaccine and you may view it as being it being rushed out and you're just unsure of perhaps the new technology for example the you know modernas and Pfizer's because they did they are using new technologies but remind yourself that it's produced to protect you it's produced so we can gracefully exit this pandemic and enter our new normal and then there's other vaccine hesitancy where it's caused through the misspread of information. Social media has really shown that anyone can share information and it might not be credible. So I think that goes into your social responsibility that you have to your community, yourself, and even the world. To be responsible enough to not share information that you know is wrong and causes fear and in the long run actually causes more harm than good. Right. Thank you. I really like the fact that you differentiated um, your thoughts about it. So thank you for, for establishing clarity. My next question to you is um, women empowerment. We have seen how women in leadership roles specifically can prosper. I talk about one woman specifically a lot which is Jacinda the Prime Minister of New Zealand so she leads with compassion and I think that shows just how powerful women are New Zealand is prosperous they are so progressive and I think a lot of credit goes to the acceptance that Jacinda has the compassion and empathy women lead more with compassion naturally because of the nurturing aspects we have. So when you see a woman doing so well, I think we should feel nothing but empowered, especially as a woman to be one. We we can take over the world. Who run the world? Girl. <laughs> <laughs> My next question to you is, um, equal work for equal pay. Well, it's, it's a legislation now in other countries and I agree with it 100% you know people have different potentials people have different experiences no matter their age color education background and education is quite a big one in Thailand where you actually automatically tend to get paid more when you're on a same level as another person if you've had higher education but I, I don't agree with that I think a lot of things come with experience people have different ways of learning and different ways of growing so I'm a big, I'm a big believer in, in equal pay, equal rights. Terrific. And uh, to wrap this session, uh, to wrap this uh, portion, uh, transgenders in Miss Universe and Miss Universe Thailand, what are your thoughts? Absolutely. They are women. They're equally a woman as I am. So break that barrier. If you're a transgender woman, you are a woman. And if your dream is to compete in the Miss Universe Thailand or Miss Universe stage, then go for it. Sure, thank you. So again, Anjali believes, Anjali rather, Anne believes that transgendered women, trans women are women. Thank you so much for, for saying that loud and clear. All right, now, well, unfortunately, um, Good. Some good things never last. We are about to wrap this up, wrap this conversation. But before we do so, um, Anjali, what is your message to your family, friends, and fans? 
Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for listening. Thank you for opening up your mind to understand that beauty comes in different shapes and sizes and accepting me for who I am. And I, from the bottom of my heart, love each and every one of you fully. All right. What is your message to the people of Thailand? I want to say it's time to break barriers. It is time to embrace change. And I know that there's a lot of changes going on right now in our country. And I just want to say, hold on tight. Everything will fall into place. But in terms of what's happening right now with Miss Universe, I want them to join my movement and celebrate themselves. All right. In final question, complete the statement. I am Anne Scott, a chemist, and I am dot, dot, dot. Miss Universe Thailand 2021. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, we just presented to you a very intelligent, a very articulate, a very authentic, and not to mention, of course, obviously a very beautiful um, Miss Universe Thailand candidate and chemist. Guys, she's the real deal. What are you waiting for? If I were you, I would crown her tonight. So, oh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. And I, and just like me, I hope you enjoyed this conversation. And I hope you learned a lot about our um, future Miss Universe Thailand 2021. If you want to support her, if you want her win, if you want her to officially claim her crown uh, of Miss Universe Thailand, please don't forget to support her in all her social media handles. And uh, please make sure that you always... Keep an eye on her, on, on her journey towards becoming your third Miss Universe. So, on behalf of Sam Factor, my name again is Carl Kaplan. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And on behalf of Anne, which is a very beautiful and very genuine, very authentic, uh, very diverse person. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And we'll see you again next time. Thank you for having Bye. me. Bye. Thanks. Thanks, Anne. Take care. Bye. Good Thank luck. you so much for having me again.